Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy, and you have entered into The Fix. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy, and happy day to you. Boy, I am super excited. Uh, My friend Heather and I just started a new treatment center uh, this today, actually, and we negotiated with them and had a conversation with them last week, and we started today. We are doing every Wednesday uh, during the morning and in the evening, we have their IOP uh, clients that we will get every other Monday. So we are excited about doing that. You know, as um, as anyone would agree or anyone who actively seeks to get well and stay well and recover and stay recovered, um, service is the key. And Heather and I and Jason and Thomas and Phil and the rest of our crazy group, David, we understand that in order for us to get well, we need to listen to others. And once we're in that process to stay well, we need to serve other people. Matter of fact, I was on the phone to Jason and even to Phil yesterday on the importance of reaching out to other people. And Thomas has set up a meeting tomorrow with Daniel and some of his uh, compadres in crime. And we're going to get together. That's what we do. Um, fellowship is such a large part of wellness and recovery that we take an active approach. We believe, and we believe this is a universal um, viewpoint that it, it spans any monotheistic religion and it, it just permeates everything. In order to get well, you need to help other people. Even Zig Ziglar would say that. You want to get better? You want to be successful? Then find a number of other people, help them be successful. And then within that success, you will find success. The happiest people I know are in the business of helping other people be happy. So this is what this is all about. Welcome to The Recovery Guy, and I'm glad you are aboard. Hey, um, a couple of weeks ago, actually, probably about a month ago, I had gotten this uh, uh, note, uh, this this uh, outline from my friend Phil. And, and I searched it out because obviously I don't want to pay, plagiarize, but I want to use other people's information because um, I've never had an original idea. And if I think that's an original idea, I'm wrong on that as well. So the best I could research this out, it's called Inside My Box. And it is by, as, met, as, as best as I could uh, find on the internet, it is by a person by the name of Rebecca Elvey, E-L-V-E-Y. So if you want more, search online, just Google search Rebecca Elvey, and maybe you can find more about this. I found as much as I needed to know. It's called Inside My Box, and I'm just going to go through this and read this and take this overall perspective and try to narrow it down into the arena of the recovered person. And what Rebecca, I trust, is saying here, comfort is tempting and and an alluring state of being. It whispers sweet promises of relaxation, ease, and predictability. However, while comfort may offer short-term solace, it can also be the silent killer of your hard work and dreams. In this message, we will explore the critical importance of never getting too comfortable and why embracing discomfort is the key to achieving your aspirations. What a great opening paragraph that is. And essentially what it's saying is don't rest on your laurels. You know, if, if you're too comfortable, if when I'm too comfortable, I'm too easy on me. When I'm too easy on me, I'm not growing. I'm not stretching. I'm not expanding out into areas that I could otherwise be experiencing new opportunities, new challenges, uh, new things in life that will spur me to be a better version of me. If I get too comfortable and I rest on this big old laurel, uh, you know, mediocrity uh, will 
uh, be soon to follow. And a person like me and, and a person in, in, in treated recovery can't afford to rest on laurels too long because if to me and to others like me, if you're not going forward, eventually you will go backwards. So life is about getting out of that comfort zone and about experience, new opportunities, new challenge, stretching myself, putting myself on purpose into situations which may be uncomfortable in the beginning, but stretch me as a person. So what I'm going to do with Rebecca's information is walk through these points that she is making here. And then I'm just going to comment on each one. And however you view recovery, whether it's A-A-O-A-N-A-G-A-S-A, your local religious affiliation, you may be a follower of a sunsets and sunrises and the tide and, and whatever makes your feel good, feel good. As long as we don't depend upon the thing that nullifies our experience, such as drugs, alcohol, and other distracting behaviors, then we are facing life on life's terms. We're not going through life as what I would call sideways. We're not medicating that which is uncomfortable. We're facing it. We're overcoming that. So let me walk through these things, and I'll try to uh, make a connection between a person who's pursuing recovery from an addict standpoint, an alcoholic standpoint, a behavior distraction standpoint, and what Rebecca was saying to the to the world. Because we understand, we who are in active recovery, we understand that our way of living has its attraction, has its benefits for everyone, because this is an, this is an approach to living well. I know a lot of you know, normal people, you know, people who can drink and, and so on and, and, uh, have a cocktail or two and, and not be affected. I, I am certainly not one of them, but I know a lot of people who fit that category. And, and they, overall, the humanity can use these, uh, titles and these approaches to a better way of living. And let's discuss them for about the next 23 minutes or so. And then uh, I'll, I'll go over them and I'll read them first. And then I'll go back through them one at a time and I'll cover them from a recovered mindset. What helps keep me recovered is the position of recovery I choose to remain in. So Rebecca talks about the danger of the comfort zone. Number two is complacency kills progress. Number three, from her title, from her opening paragraph, comfort stunts personal growth. Number four, the power of adaptation. Number five, embrace discomfort as a catalyst for success. Boy, do I, I like that a lot. Embrace discomfort as a catalyst for success. The next, the joy of achievement lies beyond comfort. Uh, And then the next one, number seven, is continuous learning and improvement. And number eight, inspiration for others. And I'll read the the conclusion. Rebecca, and I'm trusting this is her, Rebecca says, comfort is a tempting seductress luring you with the promise of an easy life, but true success, personal growth, and the realization of your dreams lie beyond the boundaries of comfort. It is in the discomfort, amen to that, it is in the discomfort of challenging yourself, pushing your limits, and embracing challenge that you truly thrive, amen again. So let this be a reminder, never get too comfortable, keep your hard work and dreams alive by continually seeking discomfort, challenges, and opportunities for growth. Embrace the uncertainty of the journey and you'll find that the path to success is often paved with discomfort and lined with sweet taste of achievement. Boy, I like this person even more. This is some great stuff. So let's get on our caps. Let's dig in deep. Let's hold on for the ride and let's see what we can make of this in the next 21 minutes or thereabouts. So let's look at the danger of the comfort zone. Is it really the comfort zone? Um, Rebecca says your comfort zone is where dreams often go to die. When you settle into a routine that feels cozy and secure, you're less likely to push your boundaries, challenge yourself, or strive for improvement. Success rarely resides in the comfort zone. Wow, is that 
That's crazy. I, I love that. The danger of the comfort zone. If I get too comfort, too comfortable, I'll eventually get uncomfortable because Sir Isaac laws of motion, Sir Isaac Newton and his three basic laws of motion, things that are at rest tend to stay at rest. And if I get too comfortable, I get lazy because I'm settling for the average. I'm settling for the norm. I've ceased to strive to get out of that comfort zone, which means I'm not growing. And if I'm not going forward, folks, I am going backward. That is the danger of the comfort zone. If I get too comfortable every now and then, it's nothing's wrong with looking at that plateau and enjoying the view, but then it's, you know, a, a hole doesn't get deep unless we dig it. And, and if I get too comfortable, and I think, well, that's as high as I can go. Or that's as deep as I can dig. I'll, I'll eventually just die by the hole. Um, one of the things that a great mentor of mine said years ago, and I heard this in the mid nineties, um, 95, 96, he said, a grave is complacency and complacency is a grave with, with both ends kicked out. And if we don't get out of that complacency, we will die there. And that is the danger of the comfort zone. Don't get too comfortable. Don't rest on our laurels too long because we will lose the ground that we gained when we were willing to get out of that comfort zone. The next thing, complacency kills progress. Boy, does it. Because complacency indicates I'm not moving forward. Complacency says I'm okay with where I'm at. There's no sense in going forward. So complacency with or without the permission kills progress because it stunts progress. It stunts the growth. And Rebecca says, comfort breeds complacency because when I'm comfortable, I'm just fine. You know, it's like um, Goldilocks and the three bears. You know, this bed was too hard. This bed was too soft. This bed is just right. And it never went further than that. When we get complacent, we get comfortable. When we get comfortable, it kills progress because there's a mechanism in me that says the hard work is over. I can rest here. I can sit here. I don't have to go any further. And it kills progress. When I say I'm okay, that means I'm mediocre. When I was in the restaurant business, uh, I would train my servers to never use the word okay because okay is is mediocre. Is that okay? Is that all right? Is that average for you? And I would tell my servers, do not, do not. And I tell my sponsors the same thing. Do not get too comfortable. The, the steps of, of that I'm involved with, the 12 steps of recovery are designed to get me uncomfortable, to get me to look at things I would not otherwise look at, to get uncomfortable for a moment that I can overcome them based on that uncomfortability. And if I get complacent, I'm not moving forward. If there's no mechanism behind that, if I get too comfortable, I will, I will get complacent and complacency kills progress. Thank you, Rebecca. Comfort stunts personal growth. Boy, is that the truth. Rebecca says personal growth thrives in discomfort. It's like bacteria thriving in darkness. Uh, the great purifier of an infection is give it some light, give it some sunlight, expose it to radiation, expose it to sunlight, expose it to things that naturally are designed to dry out infection. And I'll tell you what, comfort will stunt because comfort is going to tell me I'm okay right where I'm at. And I may be for the moment, but if I get too comfortable, I will stay there. It will stunt who I am. I always want to be moving forward. Um, One of the things that Tom Bennett, God rest his soul, told me early on in personal recovery, he was one of my treatment counselors uh, at the Nevada Treatment Center years, decades, I dare say ago. And Tom told me that, um, that not only could I get well, but I can get weller than the well. So his notion was, how, how good do you want to be? Do you want to strive? Do you, is, is there a limit to how good you can be in this life? Is there a limit to your personal growth? And the answer is no. When I stop breathing, when I stop, uh, you, as, as my good friend Rush Limbaugh, not really a friend, someone I listen to, you may or may not agree with him. That doesn't matter to me. Um, Rush would say, I have not assumed room temperature. <laughs> so until I assume room temperature, I'm going to grow. 
I'm not going to get too comfort. I'll enjoy the view from the top, as Zig Ziglar would say, but comfort will stunt my personal growth. Here, I really love this next one that Rebecca set in. The power of adaptation it says here that life is full of unexpected twists and turns. Those who embrace discomfort are better equipped to adapt to the change. Wow, that is so profound. I, I love that because I have to adapt. The world is changing. People are changing. People are evolving. And if I stay the same, if I am just a one note Bob, if I'm just get so comfortable, I stop adapting, I stop moving forward. And and next thing you know, I'm out of sync with you. I don't align myself with you because I have refused to adapt to you. Everything in nature that has survived over, I don't care how, how you measure time, but decades and, and thousands of years, what have you, has adapted. Those People who do not adapt, they die off. They may still be breathing. They still may, may be flowing blood, but otherwise they're dead. If we don't adapt, we die. We end up sitting on the couch. That's why I'm a big person in control the controllables. And sometimes what I control changes. It morphs at, as society and people change. And, and the way that I stay in tune with them is adapting to them. So as the rules change or society changes, I adapt without giving a doctrine, without getting up what I foundationally believe. I can adapt. I can adjust. I can be a part of if I observe and I adapt accordingly and I own it. As long as I make it me, there's nothing wrong with that. It says here that people who are adaptable, they're resilient. I am. I'm flexible and I am flexible. I go with the flow to the degree when, when, when it begins to question my integrity or I have to make doctrinal changes, I stop being flexible. You know, you can, you can bend me only so far. And then after that, I would break and, and I refuse to break, but I am resilient and I'm more capable of navigating the unpredictable terrain of life. Wow. What a statement that is. The unpredictable terrain. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I can stay flexible. I can stay resilient because things change all the time. And if I'm adaptable to those changes, I will not only survive, but I will survive as a resilient person who's able to navigate rough waters. I don't know how the, the sea has gone. It's like weather in Utah, it changes and I have to be able to adapt to be able to move my activity, remove my resources, move them around so that I'm adapting to the external from an internal perspective. Embrace discomfort as a catalyst for success. Wow, that is so true. My dear friend and sponsor, Slow Will, 44 years in personal recovery, he says that pain is not change. Pain is an indicator that something needs to change. When I get uncomfortable, that's an indicator that something needs to change. And I need to take a look at what I agree with, what I don't agree with, why I'm comfortable, why I'm uncomfortable, check my motives. But I need to, to embrace. I look forward. I don't always like how it makes me feel, but I embrace the discomfort because I know as a result of being uncomfortable, I will be successful because I am adaptable. I can move, I can roll with the punches, I can go with the flow, I can take a look at things I'm uncomfortable with, and it is a catalyst for success. Discomfort can be a catalyst for success that forces you to think creative, creatively, problem solve, and take calculated risk. I don't take a foolish risk, I take a calculated risk. I put myself out there. I see how far I can stretch myself without breaking, without bending, without folding, but I embrace change. I embrace discomfort because it's an indication. Why are you uncomfortable? Why does this bother you? Why does that bother you? What needs to be changed in you? What is good the way it is? And I embrace that. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily, when I get uncomfortable, it's an indicator that I need to look at something. Whether or not I change or whether or not I adapt is entirely up to me. I'm not going to adapt to something I don't morally or ethically or spiritually agree with, but I'm going to at least look at it 
and see if there's a way of me adapting without changing that core value in me. But I embrace this comfort as a catalyst for success. The next one is fantastic. The joy of achievement lies beyond comfort. Man, I just, I just love how Rebecca writes. True satisfaction and fulfillment come from achieving your goals and dreams. Sometimes I need to get uncomfortable to be comfortable. I was telling Heather the other day that there's a difference between comfort and, and confidence. So I, I rarely stay comfortable with me, but I'm confident in the power in my relationship with God that I can go forward, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that I can be confident in that power while I'm uncomfortable with me. So I don't believe in comfort. I believe that you can get too comfortable and that will stunt your growth. And if it stunts my growth, I'm going backwards. I'm not staying the same. I'm not, because eventually if I settle for mediocrity long enough, I will get less than mediocre. I will get less than average if I settle for average for too long. I'm not saying it's not good to sit on that plateau and take a deep breath. I invite you to do that. Enjoy the view from the top, right? As Zig Ziglar would say. But I love the joy of achievement. Don't you love to achieve? Don't you love the good job well done? Everybody needs a good attaboy. We pat ourselves on the back. We enjoy the fruits of our achievement, and but it lies beyond comfort. There's a great book that I recently shared with a couple friends, and it is Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And it was a book written by Richard Bach, and it's a story about Jonathan, who is a seagull, who learned how to fly while the other gulls, real birds, gulls, it's a great book. You should read it, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And these other birds got so comfortable flying to eat. That was their purpose for flying, was to go eat, to feed themselves, to get too comfortable with themselves. And you know what? They hated when Jonathan went to fly. And it's an incredible story. And Jonathan decided to get uncomfortable with himself and uncomfortable with others because he wanted achievement that lied beyond, would lie beyond his being comfortable as the other goals got because they weren't really comfortable. You know why they, you know why I knew they weren't comfortable? Because they hated what Jonathan did. Jonathan living beyond comfort into achievement exposed them getting lazy and their complacency. And they're getting too comfortable for too long, which means they got fat and they got happy. And they not only did not want to fly, but they did not want Jonathan to fly. And that's the risk we take. When we get too comfortable, when we're exposed, when we know we're not doing right by ourselves, we don't want others. Um, Stephen Covey calls it the deficiency mentality. When I view life as a pie, And there's only so many slices. So I don't want you to have a slice because if you have a slice, it means there's not enough for me. Wow. What a, wow. What an unhealthy way to live. I mean, it's bad enough that I want to be so comfortable. I'm complacent, but I don't want you to fly. I don't want you to grow. I don't want you to get well. What is, why do, why would I own that? It's bad enough I'm owning it for myself, but now I want to own it for you. That's what happens with complacent people. They live in the deficiency mentality. They're like the goals who did not want Jonathan to fly because they got so comfortable with their complacency that it stunted their growth. It stunted their progress. And not only did they not want progress for themselves, but they did not want progress for others. And that was a shame. So the next thing. Number seven, continuous learning and improvement. I love this. I am like a sponge. I read, I listen, I observe, I take mental notes, I take spiritual notes because Rebecca says to stay ahead in a rapidly changing world, you must be committed to continuous learning and improvement. Getting too comfortable stifles this progress while embracing discomfort fosters a mindset of growth and adaptation. Wow. That is some heavy stuff. I did a program for Discover Bank when I worked for them, um, and it was called Daily Mindset. And it, and it grew out of the growth mindset mentality. You're always growing. 
And that's what this is talking about. Continuous learning and improvement. What I learned yesterday, because I'm adapting, the world is changing around me. People are changing. I'm getting older. They're getting younger. I I don't want to be set in my views. I want to adapt. So I continuously learn. One of the things I do with a lot of newcomers that, that I sponsor and work with, I say, what's working? I go into treatment centers and I say, what's working for you? What's your level of thinking? How can I relate to you? What can I learn from you? How can I grow? How can I improve? How can I be a better version of me? Because I know I'm a better version of me when I'm more able to reach another person. And so I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always looking for that element of improvement that makes me a better version of me so I can be more able to serve others and maybe even you. Uh, inspiration for others. Man, what a great wrap up this is. Your willingness to embrace discomfort can inspire those around you. When others see you taking risk and striving for greatness, greatness, mind you, they are motivated to do the same. Your actions become a source of inspiration and encouragement. Wow. That is some great, great wisdom and great understanding, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Inspiration for others. You know, how how sad it would be if our energy, our excitement, our desire to get well, why keep that? I, the only reason I get that is to share it with others. And as a result of you receiving it, as a result of me sharing, I have, I'm further inspired. Why am I inspired? Because you have accepted, you have received, you have evaluated what I brought to the table. And you said, I want some of that. I was talking to my friend Jason earlier today. And we talked about a way. How can we be more effective? I was talking to Heather, talking to Phil, talking to Thomas, talking to Dave, people who are really close to me, talking to Scotty and Susie last night and inspiring others. I've got a, got a meeting tomorrow morning with, with Monty and Tom and Roger and how exciting this new envelope in my life, this new opportunity is. And we inspire each other. That is our mission. That is our goal in life. Um, I hope your higher power inspires you. Does your higher power inspire you for you? Or does your higher power inspire you so you can inspire others? And through that inspiration, you are inspired. See how that works? See, the 12th step, and and I will say this of, of AA, and 12 steps of recovery is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message, try to inspire others. That's essentially what it's saying. We tried to carry this message to other alcoholics and then what? To practice these principles in all our affairs. So my inspiration comes from my higher power. That inspiration, that power, that new position, that new attitude on life teaches me to go inspire you. And then I have to work on the gifts of inspiration and it's full cycle. It's never about me. I'm, th if you notice, I'm third in that equation. If I am to become first, I must be willing to become last. So it's God, it's others, and then it's me. And what do I have to do? I have to continue to adapt, continue to inspire, continue to learn. I can't get comfortable because the comfort zone is a danger. And if I'm complacent, it kills my progress. And if I get too comfortable, it will stunt my personal growth. And I must adapt or I die. I'll wither away. I must embrace comfort as a catalyst, as a jumping off point, as the energy. A catalyst is like rocket fuel. It propels me forward to success. And the joy of achievement lies beyond comfort. If I'm not willing to be uncomfortable, I will never achieve anything. Um, I love what Stephen Covey says about the greatest scientific breakthroughs came from break widths. Listen to this. The greatest scientific breakthroughs came from break with. I must break with an old attitude and an old mentality to adopt the new. I must say I'm wrong before I can say I'm right. I must turn on light before darkness is gone. I must become happy for sadness to be displaced. I must be kind to, to eliminate judgment and, and, and treating others unfairly and unkindly. You see how that works? I just love what Rebecca wrote. 
And I'll end with this. Well, I say I'm going to end. I may end. Comfort is is a tempting seductress, luring you with the promise of an easy life. You know, if I'm not willing to be uncomfortable, I'm not growing. And if I'm not moving forward, I'm moving backward. And for a person who's addicted to substances and negative behavior, that's a very different place. That, As it said, that's a dubious position for people much more equipped than me. I'm so grateful that Phil gave me these Inside My Box by Rebecca Alvey. Remember, the danger of the comfort zone, complacently kill, complacency kills progress, comfort stunts personal growth, the power of adaptation, embrace discomfort as a catalyst for success, the joint achievement lies beyond, lies beyond uh, comfort, and then continuous learning and improvement is number seven. And number eight is what it's all about. It's about others. Inspiration for others. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Robert. I'm the Recovery Guy. Take a listen to this. Put it in your library. Share it once. Share it twice. Find me on recoveryguy.org. Continue to follow me on um, Recovery Guy podcast. You can find me at your recovery, real recovery guy, real recovery guy on on um, YouTube. And of course, I am always here for you. If you find me on any of those, even on Instagram, recovery underscore guy, reach out to me. Let me know how I can inspire you as you inspire me. And above all, remember and always remember this. We got sick apart and we get well together. Have a great day. Oh,